What's going on everyone? My name is Boyd and I am back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action, joined with the fabulous Hells of Ravage. How would you like to introduce these players? Introduce yourself and just... Hey guys, uh, glad to be here. <laughs> a little starstruck. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What a, what a fabulous stuff. time, yeah. Hells of Ravage has been in this a community little... for ages, right? Like, you started playing like 2003 or something crazy. Old I've, man. Uh, Old I've been man. in the community a lot longer than I was in this tournament. I lost in the first round 2-0 oh. to, uh, to Burkhead. So, uh, yeah, he got the best of me for sure. So, um, yeah, this this matchup is kind of interesting because normally Kronos would get beat pretty badly by Uranus here, but obviously with Deconstruct, um, it kind of levels the playing field a little bit. Yeah, you have to, uh, you have to, it's a bit of a thinking game, really. From uh, from both both sides, you have to scout nicely because you don't want to deconstruct if uh, the Uranus players played around deconstruction, because then you're just giving them the wood back that they spent basically, uh, and then they're in a fine position. But if they haven't played around and you want to deconstruct, you have to scout really well. Back a few patches ago, when the fish was kind of standardized in terms of being close to the shore. Like back, you know, for those who remember um, before the patches, the fish could have been all over the place. Like there was a lot more variance. So they could have been a lot further from the shore. But now that fish is a lot closer to the shore, it was kind of an indirect nerf to Kronos on this map because you could have basically, you know, um, like Astro Blood here, he's got three fish right outside his dock. Yeah. Um, but that makes it a lot easier to defend. Whereas back in the pre patch, could have been, you know, you could have had all the fish, and then that would have just made you even deeper in the hole. Yeah, speak, speaking of all of that, we've been um, discussing like the the Nilla patch. We're making a, a Vubly Nilla patch and fixing some maps up. And if you go back and you play Nilla on Mediterranean, it's it's a it's, it's a very interesting map to play on. It's uh, <laughs> it can be very temperamental and, and give you no fish, give you all the fish. They give you really, really balanced fish, and then give you some bizarre. Both players get awful fish kind of variants. It's it's weird and wonderful, <laughs> but we're, we're looking into part of the it. vanilla meta. Hmm? Part of like playing you know, part of playing vanilla is just like the rage that you get though from having an awful map. So like it, it just wouldn't be the same without totally. having like three fish where your opponent has twelve fish right by his dock. So it just it's just not the same feel. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean, you didn't get the, that uh, absolute satisfaction from uh, winning with a trash yeah. map, and you're just like, "Yeah, I'm just way better than you." And, and that's the vibe. <laughs> uh, alrighty. So, what do we expect to see from these guys? Are we, are we expecting to see um, Nors go for the? Well, he's already got the Oracle set up, so it looks like he's gonna be getting that Temple Time Shift fairly soon but looks like both players gonna go 330 but i i find like is is it because the Uranus players are not like up to speed with when they need to be dumping their fishing ships or do they always just not have enough food to have constant villager production because you can see we've got a like a 430 at least in my experience and nors is like on mediterranean a, yeah go on sorry I'm, I'm Oh, sorry. There's a little lag there. Um, I was just gonna say on Mediterranean. In my experience, you should always be able to keep villager uh, production, whereas on like uh, other maps where you have to walk a little further for your dock, then it's pretty much inevitable that you're gonna have like you know five seconds where you're not gonna be able to produce any villagers. Yeah, that's that's kind of my feeling. Pretty sure, you, but you just have to get the the force of dump timing down on the fishing ships and. Uh... And you should be right there to get 3.30. But, you know, a couple of seconds here and there is not going to be the end of the world in this matchup. And both players are slightly behind the curve, so... Totally fine. So, Moreno's player um, is smart in that he um, he's already building his third dock immediately, so Constructs really not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, and I, I guarantee you that Norse is going to, like... Well, Nor's Sea Squash is going to immediately deconstruct at the first side of this dock. Uh, not only that, but the other inverted defensive advantage here for Asper Blood is uh, Valor gets himself a hero citizen, which might not seem like much, but it is uh, it is a lot. Oh, it's like we're bringing the temple back home, so 
Not going all out here. Hello? Just getting the Promethean <laughs> nice and far forward, but now we get the water. One thing, um, one thing I would have liked to see though is a deconstruct on Doc. Probably didn't deconstruct because he saw that um, Red's villager was right by the dock. He should still do it because it's going to delay his advance time by 10 to 15 seconds, even with the villager right there. And as you can see, there's really no other good use for deconstruct. Yeah. So you sure. might as well use it because if you don't use it, then there's going to be no benefit. For sure. That's exactly correct. So Hells is talking about deconstructing an early game to slow down the food eco and the advance time of the Uranus player. And, and like you can see now, there's no Thanks. real use for Deconstruct here. Now he's chucking it down. <laughs> but, uh, seeing, uh, we're seeing Shockwave was thrown down. Bream, Bream's are roughly similar, nine each it's looking like. So this is all gonna come down to Micro. Uh, and from what I've seen in these water fights, uh, in Atlantean Wars, they tend to they tend to go fairly late, uh, and neither player tends to be able to win these these fights very very cleanly. And we we tend to have the water not matter so much to win it, and it tends to go into three town centers and more late game ish, which will actually favor Kronos with the time shift if he uses it. Yeah, now that the kind of like rush phase is over with. Now we're just getting into like the classic, just spam as many ships as you possibly can for the game. Then Orana should do a little bit better, just because um, I was probably spent a little bit more money on um, the early game. And it looks like Red has better micro, at least from what I saw in the last twenty seconds. Yeah, yeah, the the micro from Red's looking really nice. He's got a beautiful concave. Nor's, Nor's not bringing his ship back. You do a little shift click micro tricks against someone who's really good at refocus fire and, and it's hard to do that in smurf tournaments to know when you should do it but you can like click your ship away and then shift click it back into the battle uh and if he does chase you it'll turn back and immediately fire and if he doesn't chase you it'll it'll um it'll return to the fight and you don't have to worry about it sitting back so a little bit of micro exactly. micro tricks oh. against good players if you ever find yourself against one <laughs> <laughs> Red also already has his third dock um, chips, whereas uh, Blue hasn't even made the third dock yet. Yeah. That at least says to me that for the next few minutes, Red's going to be able to outproduce Blue. Yeah, population's 76 to 83, so it's pretty close. But um, Aska Blue Blood is definitely going to be pushing ahead slowly here. You hear how, how Blue almost clumped both his ships together. That's like the worst possible thing you can do. Yeah. Whereas, whereas Red is that like thin line of ships. Yeah. It's that way you can um, that way you can bring back a couple ships at a time. Whereas it's a lot harder to do that. Um, I click it. when your units are clumped like that, you almost always end up drag clicking like at least two or three ships. Yeah, there's lots of like uh, guesswork micro in the big um, in the big ship clumps. So you you kind of look at where the ships are pointing and you grab all the ships in that in that area and you pull them back. And as you said, if they're clumped, it's not possible to do that. Um, I find the best way to micro these ships when you have like more than say ten. And North Sea Squash does tap GG. out there. GG well played yep. is to separate them into two separate control groups. So then you can control them as if they're two small groups which which pathfind much easier into those straight lines rather than a massive ship which might go into that small clump like we saw with north sea squash there so all played by Aspel black that, but yeah any thoughts yeah i mean that was pretty standard play by both players um and it seemed like red i mean just from the first like the eight minutes of play it seems like he's just a stronger player um, I know that's not exactly deep analysis, but it just seemed like he had his timing down with the third dock, with being able to produce three ships immediately. I mean, if you look right now, he's got like 20 ships to lose five. So it just seemed like a pretty bad beating. Um, well, I mean, the the uh, the Barim count's actually really close. It's 38 to 40. So it's not like Asper Blood out macroed. I think it's more like the 
Micro was just insanely in favor of Asper. Oh, yeah, the Micro was a lot better. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to... Blue has been playing Atlantean. Oh, yeah, Blue's been playing Atlantean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, I'm going to move on to the next game. So we'll pop out and get that one coming real soon.